So I've got my side art all tacked up. It's all measured and doubled and triple checked. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I go ahead and apply this final. You don't need a lot of tape. As long as you've got decent tape, it should stick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna fold the, fold the top down. It's gonna come down. I'll start peeling the backing and I'll rip that off. And then what I like to do is you'll see I roll up the old backing so I actually have something to hold on to. It makes like a stick. Keeps everything nice and neat. And then I'll go ahead and I'll apply the vinyl up. And then once it goes up, I'll pull the bottom backing off and we'll go down. And that's pretty simple. We don't need any wrap attack or anything like that. Uh, it's a good thing to use if you haven't applied vinyl before, but it's not 100% necessary. So let's go ahead and set up to do that. So what I like to do is take any extra tape I've got and I'll pull that off and just put it somewhere else to make sure that things aren't moving. And then you should be able to let it draw, drop down. So go ahead and pull off your backing and what you might want to do is just double check to make sure that there's nothing on there. Just keep a tack cloth handy and I'll just wipe off any extra dust after the surface has been prepared. And then once you've got it like that, you go ahead and slice off the backing. So I just keep it exactly enough handy to do that. And even try to make a nice straight cut too. And just be careful not to cut your side of your cabinet. So once you've got your backing off, you can go ahead and start applying it. So one thing I like to do is I'll take my old box paper backing and I'll kind of use it as a way to hold up the artwork. So I just roll it up nice and tight and I put that flat part so it is sticking on like that so it's easy to get off. This just gives you a little bit more support to kind of hold on to it. And if you do end up getting it on like this, just a little quick tug. You get, every, get it right off the material if you put it on by accident. And let's go ahead and start applying. So I like to hold this tight and I just go back and forth. If you make nice even strokes like this, you should be bubble free. And once you get to the top, just pull the rest of that support off. And just continue on. There you go, nice and neat, no bubbles. And then we go ahead and we lift the bottom up and we'll put that on. You do need to make sure that you remove all your tape before you do this, makes your life easier. So once you've got that all done, just go ahead and take your backing off. And I do the same thing, so I will pull this up and I think I might give it a quick wipe with my tack cloth. There you go, and I like to hold it up halfway like that. And then I just start working down. Nice even strokes. It's a fair amount of pressure. And I will say, doing this on camera, it's much more nerve-wracking 
when I used to do it for a living. I'm not gonna lie, I had to cut away to fix something. That's what I get for rushing. And then when you meet your backing, you can choose to roll it or you can remove it completely. Uh, because this has a curve in it, I'm going to hold on to it just to give that part out here some support until it starts to stick. And once you get that little bit on, you can go ahead Carefully remove your back, and you're going to want to support this little edge out here. So there you go. New side art installed, and uh, no bubbles. Nice and easy. I tell you, it's starting to look like a real game now that it's got side art on it. That really makes a big difference. I can't wait to get the T-molding in, marquee, get that coin door done, and we're on our way. All right, guys, so I'm in the garage tonight. I'm working on the track and field cabinet. The side art's on, and I'm doing T-molding. So I originally picked up the 13 16 offset T-molding for Century Cabinets from the ArcadeShop.com website, and it's the wrong offset for this cabinet. It, it might work on other cabinets, but it's not working on this one. So what I'm going to do is put this 7 8 T-molding on, and I've started trimming it using a trimmer. Now, it actually fits really well um, on one side. So let me see if I can show you guys how this is looking. So on this side here, you can see that it, it lines up flush. So I've got the factory edge on the inside, and I only need to trim off little bit on the outside. So I've already done one length uh, of trimming it and the way to do this is to put it kind of on the back side of the cabinet and then trim it and then pull it off and move up another five feet. So as you see here I've done four or five feet worth and I'm just gonna go ahead and keep trimming the rest of this off and I you know I just you know I tap it in with my rubber mallet and I go ahead and use this T-molding trimmer right here, and uh, I just want to give a, a quick thanks to John for letting me borrow this. This is very handy, and it makes everything go by so much faster versus doing this with an X-Acto knife or a utility blade or you know, a razor blade or something. And it, it's it's quick. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to continue doing this stretch here real quick so you guys can just see how it's done. I don't need to use both sides, but if I did need to use both sides, I put it on like this and squeeze and just drag it up and down. Um, I'm going to only do one side because the other side has a nice fit. Um, there's no need to trim that off. And uh, we'll leave that factory edge. But I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. I'm gonna slice a little bit more of this off just so you guys can see how it works. Super easy to use. If you ever need a trim T-molding, I highly recommend using that. It's too bad that that offset T-molding did not fit though. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I just go ahead and kind of make sure it's all tapped in and relatively even. And then I only need to use one side of the trimmer and I've already got it started up there, but even if you don't have it started up there, you can, you can start in the middle, it's fine. You just push in and eventually you'll see it and it starts to pull the extra off. I'm just going to go all the way down the length of the cabinet and I just come back up to make sure that it, it's even up there. And there we go. It's really that easy to do. Um, and it comes out looking pretty nice. So that's how you use that T-molding trimmer. If you're doing a lot of cabinets like this, I recommend it. But I just want to again say thanks, John, for letting me borrow this. Very handy. Very handy, this tool.